Anti-Corruption Coalition Uganda, ACCU, together with their Apache-based local partner, the Apache Anti-Corruption Coalition, TAACC, implemented the Citizen Action Platform, CAP, a project aimed at improving health service delivery in the district. The CAP project, funded by the Partnership for Transparency Fund, PTF, through ACCU, was started in December 2013 as a pilot program through which locals would be sensitized on use of modern technology to bring out shortcomings in the 33 health facilities in Apache District. Tom Superman, Executive Director of the Apache Anti-Corruption Coalition, a Citizens Action Platform project. Uh, we started implementing in the year 2013 December and it is specifically addressing issues of accountability in the area of service delivery in the health sector. The Citizens Action Platform is funded by Partnership for Transparency Fund and uh, this is the third year the project is rolling. Um, we do monitoring in the whole of Apache District, in the entire 33 health facilities found within the facility, within the district. So that is how we have been moving on, and uh, that is the area of operation. We piloted this project for nine months. Um, uh, that was uh, December 2013 up to November 2014. Then uh, they have been upscaling it for one one year. So it was upscaled in 2014. Then on seeing the results and what is what the project is doing on uh, on ground, again in 2015 uh, we got another another uplift, and then in 2016 the project has kick started. So. Uh, that means the project is really realizing values and then um, the community needs to be engaged time and again for them to open up their eyes because health is paramount and without a healthy community nothing can be done. So that is how the project has been moving. Citizens participation includes reporting gaps they identify in the various health facilities through two platforms, that is use of short message services to 8,500 and 8,0800100189 for a direct toll-free phone call to the focal person who in turn carries out investigations after reports on a given facility have accumulated. This then results in conducting a public accountability forum if such need is deemed necessary where issues are publicly aired out and solutions provided instantly by the district top officials attending the PATH. Amplifying the citizens' voices using ICT. In this case, the community members use their phones uh, within the community to uh, report their grievances or the problems which they are meeting at the health facilities within their localities. This citizens' action platform project uses technology where the person who reports any grievance in the health sector is not known. He or she just reports through a toll-free SMS line without the knowledge of the person who has committed the bad thing in the health center that he or she has visited. The system does not tell you who are sent, but you get the issues and then you present it to the authorities. And then they always have the meetings to address the issues. So we have seen this project building the relationship between the service providers and then the service users in these different health facilities which we have been monitoring. Initially this was done locally by the 77 independent budget monitors who were trained by TASCC, but on realization that it much often took a long time to get feedback and considering that their security was easy to be compromised due to lack of dependable privacy and confidentiality, the CAP project involving use of technology was introduced. 
we have up to about 77 community independent budget monitors that have been trained and we have not used them only in this particular project but we have used them uh, in other projects that we are implementing as the Patch Anti-Corruption Coalition. We trained our people that when they are reporting they should answer uh, very many questions. What is their issue? Who did it? When was it uh, done? And uh, where was it uh, done? Huh? So if you answer all the four W's, then you'll give us information that uh, we can rely on. And uh, there now, from the Public Accountability Forum that is organized uh, at the service delivery point, which is the health center, either two or three or four, or even uh, a hospital, huh? people can dialogue and then they agree on what should be done in order to correct the situation. So through that, we have managed to cause positive changes in health service delivery in Apache district since we started implementing this project. Since the system provides confidentiality, many people have appreciated it and numerous reports have been received and investigated and paths later organized to avail citizens with solutions, especially in the health facilities of Abongomola, Abey, Teboke and Apache Men Hospitals, which had various reports of irregularities such as sale of medical provisions in government facilities, drug thefts, late coming and absenteeism of medical staff. We have had a number of issues from various health facilities. Um, to be specific, we started with Aladwell Center 2. Then there was a part general hospital. Uh, we moved to Abomola Health Center 3. Uh, Duhu Health Center 4. We had Tebo Health Center 3. Among other health facilities, Health Center 2, 3, 4, and then the general hospital. So we have been intervening as a the Apache and the Corruption Coalition, uh, the implementer of this project. Oponya says that the project was first received with open hands at Alado Health Center 2 in Ibuja sub county, where the in charge, known as Odong Bleo, had routinely opted to compromise the health service delivery to the people, as well as going against the professional code of conduct. The first health facility that had a lot of issues coming from it was Alado Health Center 2, which is in the Boja sub county uh, in Apache district. Uh, it had numerous issues ranging from the way the health facility was being managed to issues related to, mis to corruption, to mismanagement of uh, medicine in the facility, and even to the suffering of the staff at the facility. You know, this, the, the whole thing even upped the staff because at one point, the staff of the facility, like uh, the in charge of that particular facility, was called Bileo Odoma. He was a bully. He was sexually even harassing some female staff. And uh, even he was seducing um, uh, clients, I mean, sick people who come to the facility. Huh? He was misusing the, the PHC fund, huh? uh, and uh, generally he was, I would say, kind of a lifeist, and yet he is the leader of that facility. Huh? So when we organize, when we receive a lot of complaint through the system uh, on another health center too, then we organize a public accountability forum. Actually, that was when even uh, the representative of the donor. Had they come, they physically attended, and they had and saw the kind of engagement with the different leaders of the district. Um, it was very good that uh, uh, he could not deny the issues because even some of the issues now were being were coming from his own staff, those who were unhappy uh, with the way you had been mismanaging the health facility. Um, Odomo Bileo, the in charge of that facility, was transferred uh, with a demotion, transferred to work under somebody else. Currently, 
is uh, working uh, in a poor health center three, but is no longer the topmost person heading the facility. Today, after the CAPS intervention, service delivery at the unit is back to normal as the Lodge rose, the current in charge narrates. Before I came here, really, here was in a mess. I had to the radio what was happening. And in fact, when they told me that I was to come here, I really denied. I refused totally. But uh, you see, since you cannot do, I do so much with the with your bosses, so I, I, I accepted to come. But when I came, really, the place was in a mess. The community and the and the and the, and the health center were not in good relationship. The first thing when I came here and I heard I heard that people were were doing some tests by asking money from the community. Nets were being distributed. Um, they were also through, um, distributed but not free of charge. At least they were asking something from the community. And also the services, the people were really getting, they were not satisfied with it because when the health center was being closed earlier, and when patients come in, come at the, at least at past hours, outside the working hours, they were not getting, receiving any help. So when I came, I started from where the former inside left. I started by meeting my, my staff. We had a meeting, we had a meeting with the health unit management and we organized and we tried to improve the what was going on. I we discussed it not to uh, to ask any money from the community and also to be always at the service of the co of the of the community whenever any sickness happens. In case somebody comes with her his sickness and the past hour. We are at home, please go and give a, a helping hand because the time of sickness nobody knows. Even I gave and I, I, I put them, I said, now you put yourself in the situation of, the, of somebody who is sick, you have gone somewhere to seek the service. And from there, you find a nurse at home, you ask to go and help you, he or she refused. What will you feel? So let us try to at least to help these people of this community. And so far, since I've tried to improve, I don't know anyone from the community, but as I see myself, I don't know what the community thinks about the health center, but for us, I've seen that we are trying at least. Uh, personally, I've attended about three dialogues organized by this project. Uh, one in uh, Aduku Health Center 4, Another one is Teboke Health Center 3, and then another one, Apache Hospital. And um, in terms of, uh, I could say, achievement of the project, I would say the project, first of all, has provided for us a platform where the service beneficiaries and uh, those who deliver the services get the opportunity to interact and pick from the host must the problems that really uh, the, the beneficiaries are getting in relation to the services, particularly the health services being delivered. Oponye Tom, also commonly known in Apache as Superman, the executive director of TASCC, appreciated the project since inception built confidence among the locals who in the past never bothered to report negative tendencies in their health facilities. I have liked this project because of breaking the fear that most of the people still have. They fear that if they report any problem that is affecting them in service delivery, especially in the health sector, then uh, the officer, the medical worker, can either mistreat them 
or implicate them. Tapashman Hospital, the project, besides advocating for a new ambulance to replace the old one, which had been packed for years after developing a mechanical fault, the hospital administrator, Amuk Joseph, testifies that the project has also helped check staff in this plea, which has culminated in cases like harassing patients and extorting money from them. TAC has been here and uh, is serving the people in the district. And um, it's not a new project uh, they have been taking. They have been uh, collaborating with the health workers in particular, uh, leave alone other workers in the district. Um, but you know, um, sometimes when uh, you uh, in your own home, you may fail to identify areas of weaknesses. But when somebody comes from out, they would tell you, say, now look, this is an area you are not attending, this is an area you have left out. So this one, uh, TAC has really opened some of these uh, areas and it has made us to look into ourselves through a mirror and we have discovered some of our loopholes um, by, for example, identifying some health workers' uh, misbehavior. We talk about theft of drugs, somebody has stolen a drug, or mismanaging a patient, uh, looking at the patients negatively, and handle, mishandling, in other words. Among the improvements the project is proud of is the fact that it has been realized by district executives that two years ago, over 50% of the district's health facilities had been invaded by bats, which hugely attracted national media attention, and later the challenge was addressed. The district executive is also engaged in the implementation of the project because they are primarily in the provision of solutions to gaps raised by the public. We also got um, issues coming from Abay Health Center 2 in Chawende Sub County. It is a very nice facility if you look at it just near the north. But uh, there were also very many issues coming from that facility. And uh, one of the critical issues that came was the fact that uh, the facility uh, was uh, uh, colonized by very many bats. The OPD, the uh, staff quarters, and so on. And the smell of the place was bad. Actually, too many bats had occupied, and even the gable ends of the structures had collapsed because of uh, the effects of the bats. Uh, because it is near the lake, so the bats I think come from around the lake. Yeah? Nobody could go to fumigate and so on. But when we intervene, then the gable ends of the health center to OPD uh, uh, block was corrected, and then the facility was fumigated. And just on hearing that we were taking a public accountability forum to obey L Center 2, I think they quaked and uh, the bar hall that was supposed to provide clean and safe drinking water to the staff and the patients, that had been, uh, that had broken down for more than two years and was not repaired, was repaired just on hearing that we were going there. Then uh, the officer was supposed to do public education. Uh, in the health sector of that facility was sleeping in a patch town here a distance of about 30 kilometers away so first of all he was rare he was not there for the people and at the same time he, he would do, go once in a while and when we went with the DHO and with the officer with the, who is in charge of environmental health then this person was put to task and right now is staying at the facility. That one to us is a very positive change in Abay Health Center too. The Assistant Chief Administrative Officer, a part district local government, who doubles as the in charge of NGOs in the district, Atain Francis, gives the genesis of the project and the milestones it has registered in improving health service delivery to the people. I'm Mr. Ten Francis, uh, Assistant Chief Administrative Officer, Patch District Local Government. Uh, one of my responsibilities, I am in charge of non-governmental organization in the district. I am also in charge of the health, which of course happens to be 
an area where this particular project is uh, working on. And as far as uh, the Apache the Corruption Collision is concerned, this is uh, one of our longest uh, partners in the district, NGO in the district, and uh, they have done quite a lot in, in terms of uh, bringing to our attention as leaders the shortcomings we are having in our services we, we deliver. Uh, specifically to this project, we, when they got money from the Corruption Collision, Uganda, they, 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 they brought it to our attention as a requirement. We developed uh, an MOU, we signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, TAC and, uh, and the Corruption Collision Uganda, and uh, that's how the project started operating in Apache. And um, in terms of, uh, I could say, achievement of the project, I would say the project, first of all, has provided for us a platform where the service beneficiaries and uh, those who deliver the services get the opportunity to interact and pick from the host math the problems that really uh, the, the beneficiaries are getting in relation to the services, particularly the health services being delivered. And uh, to me, that's one good uh, achievement of the project. Secondly, there were issues that were raised in, in regards to the services we, we are rendering. We were able to even address them there and then, because like in this dialogue, you find the resident district commission is there, the district chairperson is there, the cow is there. Then in the in charges of these facilities, like for the case of Aduko L Seta 4, we had the, the, the doctor in charge of the facility. Uh, in Apache Hospital, we had the medical superintendent. In Teboke, also the clinical officer in charge. I think, to me, that was a very good opportunity. So we were able, even through different, depending on that challenge being raised, if there are those that are related to the chairman, it is addressed directly by the chairman. If there are those that concern the RDC, then it is also there and then. If there are others, by the cow and the in charge. Yeah. So basically, that's what I can say about the project. The National Cup Project Coordinator, Lillian Zawede, said that the initially slated nine-month project has since 2013 been receiving a boost in terms of funding from the development partners and she expresses the hope that it will go on even beyond the health sector and the park district as a whole. Initially, CARP was supposed to was a, was a pilot project and it was supposed to take about nine months. That's starting from December 2013. But then uh, we realized that we had issues, uh, technological issues. The system started actually late. So it pushed, uh, we had to push it further uh, with the help of our donors. And then uh, we went into an extension. We had an extension of, uh, from 2015 September to, to uh, from 2014 to 2015 uh, uh, September as an extension of the project. Uh, because of the, some of the technological issues and then also because we were starting to realize some few changes then. Because a pilot with, in the initial stages was uh, a short time. Nine months without technology, then you, you haven't done anything. But as we've proceeded, we've gone on into different as recommendations have been coming in. As I've told you, we, we are now partnering with uh, Transparency International. In the initial stages, when we had the SMS short code 6363, we found out that most of these people are illiterate, like most people are illiterate. They can't actually send a message. Even even if you 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 you, you provide uh, training for them, not everyone can send a message. So what we we did uh, is uh, we tried as much as possible to to train them, but also we came into we we, we entered a partnership with Transparency International, who have. Uh, call center so we use that and encourage people to call so we we saw that we have more calls from them and that was also a lesson which was learned from some other projects where with the engagement with transparency international because they also had a, a similar project but it failed with the call sent with the toll free sending messages so they resorted to the call center now we also wanted to try out the using the call center and we've registered some considerable 
changes from that because people were now calling in and you know with uh, with with us ugandans people would love to hear someone on the other end of the, of, of the line instead of having uh, a person sending a message and then the system sends back a message to you that uh, your complaint has been handled or it's been sent to this stage so it's more interactive when you call someone but uh, we proceeded on to something else and then we entered partnership with uh, UNICEF over the year report and now we realize that at least with this partnership we don't have to pay as as before with the 6363 short code we had to pay now in partnership with unicef we can use this uh, free technology that they have we promote it on their behalf but we are also promoting cap in a way because people can still send health issues in a uh, concerning them in a patch and these are sent free from any network from any network mtn airtel UTL, Orange, or all of them are free. So with that, we realized uh, also uh, a, a change, which was really good. And also, with uh, as I've said, the toll-free call center, they've been a bonus to cap. So that has kept on the project uh, running for this this long time. So we are hoping uh, by uh, by December, there's going to be an extension till December. Maybe after December we shall be, we, we don't know, maybe the donors can, can, can advise on that, but probably we sh we are, they are thinking of a phase two. So this can be replicated even beyond a patch, because they have other plans for taking it to Kenya, for replicating it in other sectors. So CAP will grow bigger, not only tied to health, but it can go to all service sector, uh, the service uh, delivery, uh, social sectors. The project has since, however, received mixed reactions from the duty bearers and district departmental heads, ranging from criticism and compliments as the different stakeholders express. Uh, however, although TAC is doing really much in the district, uh, most health workers tend to look at them negatively in relation to how they also react to some, some areas. For example, they would, much of them would focus on uh, negative uh, aspects, not admiring or appreciating good work done uh, by, the, by the health workers, by most health workers. Uh, sometimes when you see them appearing on the compound, then somebody from here, a patient has gone to them to say, to report, to say, this health worker has handled me this way, this way, then they come in. The side of the doctor, I used to fear that. When I, when I hear somebody that I'm from TAC, really, it embarrasses me. I mean that these people are coming just to look for problems, to look for faulty, faulty, faulty things. But when I came to learn that they were, they were doing something good at least to improve the quality of services to the people, and I, I started liking them, and when they come, I always welcome them. Ayuji Evelyn, the CAP project focal person, said that the advocacy is never appreciated, but all efforts are to be done to see that the services delivered to the people are upscaled to the required standard. So with the advocacy is another thing. And uh, at first, when the impact is not yet realized, you cannot realize its value. But uh, after seeing the benefits, like uh, when we first had the first forum here, um, I know all the health workers who are here, uh, plus the in charge who was here, did not appreciate, and if up to tomorrow, has not appreciated. But you don't move away from them. I've even ever had the issues with the doctor, the DHO of a part about the issues we are pulling drops here. Why don't you appreciate our work? We are doing this, we are doing A, B, C, D. But you are there going and doing, talking about anything. But it has never, never made me move away from. Actually now we have become best friends, but from a hard point of view. So when we came here, the facility was so dirty, things were in a mess. But it did not push me away. Three years down the road, we have worked. We have now. It took us a lot of time for them to start appreciating this, 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 this work. 
so much as we keep advocating people keep reporting we should not because they are there to deliver services and we are doing the complementary the supplementary work to to, to, to to monitor and then put everything to light because for them they might be seeing only the other good side about what is happening but deep down what is happening they don't know but once we bring it we know it is painful right but uh, if it is pointed out and it is corrected and the community starts enjoying we don't benefit from it actually for us it is only our joy that service delivery is flowing now like in Alado Health Center too ever since we had the forum the community is enjoying and they just do appreciate us for doing that for exposing the problems out but if we or else the project wasn't there to push pull out the issues which was happening here possibly a ladder would been fully would have been fully broken down but now we see the facility now much as it needs now things here and there attentions are already here that uh, a ladder now needs this and even the service providers so it provides checks and balances that now needs we see the compound now very smart. We see now the in charge not having problem. People now pick up their roles and responsibilities and they flow. But if really this facility had broken down, how many people would have been affected by now? So advocacy is uh, a win-win situation. So talk about it and those ones who are supposed to come and, can, and, and rescue the situation, they come in so that the community around benefits from everything. During the latest district dialogue meeting held on 20th April 2016 and attended by the in charges of the different health facilities, the chairperson, assistant chief administrative officer, district health officer, among others, it emerged that several irregularities still occurred in government facilities and directives were consequently made to address them while other long term solutions were said to be in the pipeline. Uh, actually, Mm, I entered into the system in October last year, and uh, from that, okay, we have had uh, these people, the, the, the past few hygiene care, we actually contracted them, they sprayed, but actually it, it took some few periods, and then they came back again, and as it was mentioned earlier, these things, okay, the bus are now moving to the near communities, they leave the facility, they move to the near, but after some period they are back again, just like that. But we are not getting tired, we are planning. The, this little allocation, the PC fund, we allocate, we spray. They move, after some period, they come back. It's just like that. We took a uh, stock of facilities which were invaded by bats. And we found that almost 50% of our facilities were invaded. So if we are going to to spray at 900 per each facility was going to be very costly and we didn't have money for that. So what we did was to engage some experts. There were some uh, private uh, uh, farming control service pro providers. We consulted them and we negotiated with them and they agreed to charge uh, on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the number of blocks of buildings which have been invaded. And their, their, their fee was not so bad. Yes, um, my name is uh, Geoffrey Elingo Wera. I am a councillor at LC5 for Chawete Sub County in a part of the local government. And in the, in the, the local government, I, work, I sit in the Committee of Health and Education. The upcoming problem of the bats that are uh, threatening government health facility, especially in Chawente, we have the problem in Abay Health Center 2, and then Chawente Health Center 3. Also, we have the same problem in uh, Golowelo from the school. Also, the bats are also invading a uh, staff house. Um, we sat today, in, in, we have been sitting in different forums trying to find a way of combating the bats. But the only available means at the moment is very expensive. A spray, if you hire a contractor to spray a building like only one staff house, a minimum pay is about 300000 
This budget is nowhere in any of the facilities. Even in the, our primary schools, the money collected by parents are too meager, despite also other pressing needs. So we have been suggesting to the people, while we at the district and, and the people in the medical department try to find a way of combating the bats, I'm, I'm advising the occupants of these various buildings that there are also other cheaper means that currently we, we are using it. And we, it is now uh, working very well in a Golwell or primary school where we hire people, we pay a small amount, we give like 10,000, 20,000 to one or two people. You wait when the temperature is fairly okay, they climb uh, through the ceiling board up to the, the roof or the, or the, into the building. They destroy these bats using the sticks and they throw them away and we put the wire mesh. With the issue of the bats, it has also been there. We have, we, have been, we have sprayed even these bats, but we spray within one month to two, they are back again. They keep on coming, we also keep on spraying them. My name is Aukelo Echonjim Emmanuel. I am the district secretary for works and technical services supply. Uh, the concerns that were raised by the Apache and the Corruption Commission, I really concur with the concerns that were raised because those are problems that are within our health facilities, within our schools and the rest. However, we really, as we start today, we need to get a way to have them solved. I want to put in place a situation where uh, there is a dental clinic that uh, they were complaints that they're charging some little fee for that and then the the, the, the medical officer explained that that fee they were charging was to buy some other equipments that are really nothing like the cotton wool and the rest that were not supplied by the national medical stores. And they, he told us that of recent they decided to refer persons, all dental cases, to Lira Regional Referral Hospital, others to a Duval Center for, which to me is honestly not good. because. Uh, much as we are not supposed to charge any fee at a government hospital, somebody find having a problem, the dental problem, is somebody who is supposed to be handled with a lot of care. I have instructed him to straight away start operating the dental unit tomorrow or even today as he gets back to the station. If there is no nothing for them to use in the facility, they should ask person to provide those things in kind, not to get money from our patients. I think from the dialogue meeting we have just concluded today, a number of issues came up, others directly affecting the civil service, others affecting the services we offer in terms of infrastructure, in terms of consumables. I think we were able to address some of them. One, on the civil service, there were cases brought on uh, indiscipline, alcoholism, Remember in the session I took the charges and the people through the disciplinary procedures that should be followed. And I, we expect them that uh, they should get back and then begin formalizing those cases of indiscipline so that those technical team, those technical staff are brought to book. That's why. Two, there are aspects of infrastructures. Now that one we have agreed that as a district, there are those that we shall handle at our level as a district because we have also some budget. Then also we have advised the sub-counties that with effect from next financial year, 2016-17, government is going to decentralize development funding to sub-counties. So we have advised that the sub-counties should be able to also handle those infrastructure that can be uh, handled within the resource envelope that will be availed to them in the next financial year. So what we, we, we need is the health, the Ministry of Health to come up on a quarterly basis. We know that you provide money to the districts to do monitoring and uh, supervising of these particular health centers. But when you go down to them, it's like uh, the work is not really done. So we would actually call upon the Ministry to take the initiative as them to ensure that the people they have in the districts are really doing this work. Because we wouldn't have all these issues that we, we normally see, breakdowns, shoddy work, uh, 
issues of uh, bats, issues of uh, solar lighting, all these issues coming up in uh, health service delivery in, the, in, in these health centers. But we know that you, you may not be God uh, who can be in every place at, at the same time. But at least you can take an initiative in ensuring that at least all the, the monitoring and supervision is done as it's supposed to be done on a quarterly basis without missing. So that and those health centers which have found that, that they're, they're not uh, active, let them provide uh, training. For the health unit, they let them empower the health unit management committees to do this on their behalf because I know they have a responsibility, they have roles to play as the health unit management committees. Let them take up these, let them refer, get, provide refresher courses for these people so that on their behalf they can do this work because I know they're supposed to be doing it.